He left me with no choice. I felt like a criminal. I had to look after the company. It was a form of bullying. It's not personal, it's business. This is my life. This was one of the most difficult decisions I have had to make. Now, I'll be the first to acknowledge that Gary has done some tremendous things for this business. But when the numbers don't stack up, heads have got to roll. Well, Gary was our CEO and he needed to be held to account. Accountability, it's critical. <laughs> the history? Where do I start? Well, I first joined the business in the late 80s. Junior sales representative, 40 to 50 hours on the road each week. Oh, the culture was different back then. We used to actually have fun. Relationships meant something both in and out of the business. Oh, sure, I'd be doing long hours, but I used to love it. It's funny you talk about contracts, though. When I started, I was given a one-pager. And even then I didn't read it. It wasn't long before I got my first manager gig, and then it just kicked on from there. Mid-level management, leadership team position, and then became CEO three years ago. Well, they did give me a contract to sign when I was announced as CEO. More of a phone book than a contract, though. They pushed hard for me to sign it, but I refused. Not so much that I was making a stand, I just wanted to get on with the job. I wasn't expecting to be sacked a few years into the role. We acknowledge that Gary had a meteoric rise through the ranks, and I was certainly supportive of him being promoted to the CEO role. There were some murmurings that he was quite the lad in his earlier roles, but that's not that unusual in our line of work. Contracts. We have a big HR department. I expect that contracts are taken care of. I don't know why we don't have a signed contract on file for Gary. Probably just slipped through. Well, ever since the private equity guys came on board, I feel like I've been a marked man. Well, I've no problems with accountability, but, but daily workless reporting? <laughs> well, come on. I'm not a 19-year-old in, in his first job. I'm running a $65 million business here with 400 employees around the country. And you should have heard some of the comments made at these board meetings. Seriously. If that wasn't bullying, I don't know what is. Ambushing me by tabling reports that had been prepared behind my back. And, and that whole thing about the investigation, well, that was just a joke. Who did I speak to about it? Well, it's a bit hard when you're the CEO. Buck stops with me and all that, doesn't it? No, hang on. I did speak to Jeannie about it. Jeannie's our director of people and brand and reports to me. Obviously, I wasn't going to put anything in writing, but I absolutely said I was being bullied. Did I feel uncomfortable about how the board was treating Gary? Well, I understand it wasn't pleasant. But we're not playing tiddlywinks here. This is a $65 million business with 400 employees around the country. And more importantly, the shareholders have put a shitload of money into this business and quite frankly are entitled to see results. Well, with the investigation, we had no choice. We had some very serious allegations that have been made against Gary. And if I didn't investigate them, I would have been exposed. We were not going to sit back and let the media have a field day with an expose on our CEO inviting key customers out on his yacht to be served drinks by escorts while judging a nautical pole dancing competition. Look, I understand that when you apply the microscope to the yacht incident, it looks bad, but as I shared with the investigator, there's a couple of critical issues. One. The culture of this industry, while not great, it's is rife with this stuff. Two, I didn't even organise the bloody event. It was our director of sales, and I had words with him about it on the yacht. That's a bit rich, coming from this board. The stories I have heard about the Christmas parties these guys have had. Oh, don't forget, these were our biggest customers on that boat. The work I generated on that day alone made up for the last quarter's losses. No, I don't accept that there was any mixed messaging. Were we applying the blowtorch to improve sales? Absolutely. Was that giving free reign to engage in debauchery? Come on. Look, in any case, 
that investigation was left on the basis that Gary's culpability was inconclusive. Well, that was not the only reason we let him go. This was a termination for performance reasons. But the truth be told, I thought it was good to have a couple of other different reasons which I could base the decision on. Now, this business has undergone significant transformation in recent years, and Gary has not kept up with that, when in fact, we needed him to drive it. <laughs> performance. We regret to advise you that the board has decided to terminate your employment for reasons of persistent and serious underperformance and failure to discharge your duties in a diligent way. What is that anyway? And how is it that I can be bulleted without so much as a cursory warning letter? We've spent tens of thousands of dollars having our HR guys roll out supposed best practice in performance management, where it's been my performance management. In fact, I have been given a bonus every year that I have been employed here, and not once have I been rated as not meeting expectations. Look, I know when I've let people go, it has always been after a, a fair process was followed. You know, warnings, counselling, the usual. Yes, we have policies. Are they best practice? Well, I certainly hope so. We've certainly spent enough on them to ensure that they are. But it's a bit silly to expect that I or anyone else on the board was going to mollycoddle Gary through a Mickey Mouse performance improvement plan. And the truth be told, the very fact of him raising this just confirms what the board has thought for quite some time. He just doesn't get it. And that nonsense about bonuses and performance appraisals, the past is the past, and we have moved on. Three months pay. Three months pay. <laughs> I have a mortgage. Three kids in private schools. And because of the way this investigation thing was handled, my, my reputation has been significantly damaged. Oh, there's no way that three months is going to cut it. You know what's really sad about this? They knew about the stress that I've been under. They knew that I've been seeing a psych for my depression. It was almost as, as though that knowledge is what tipped them over the edge. We felt that an amicable parting of the ways was the way to go. Opportunity to resign, three months pay, deed signed, and a six month non-compete. Mind you, if some of the other board members had had their way, they wouldn't have paid Gary a cent. The sixth month non-compete is in his latest contract anyway, and from what our lawyers tell us, it's industry standard. Non-compete. You've got to be kidding. Even when people have signed contracts, we haven't enforced those. This is just more victimisation. We're comfortable with our actions. They've given me no choice but to fight. Am I worried about my reputation? No more than they should be worried about theirs. Some battles just have to be fought. It's about the principle.